Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and today we're going to look at the Gini coefficient. The Gini coefficient was created by Corrado Gini, an Italian statistician, and he was working with the Lorenz curve. And in a previous video, we plotted data illustrating income distribution in the United States in 1970 and 2021. And with the plotting of that data, we get this Lorenz curve here that illustrates the distribution of income or wealth, depending on what you're measuring. In this case, it's the cumulative percentage of income. So we're measuring the distribution of income uh, across the population uh, in quintiles, what we call quintiles, the bottom 20%, the next 20% until we get to the, the top 20% of the population. And Corrado Gini was trying to consider how can we have a quick data point to illustrate the level of income distribution within a nation and how we can utilize that to see whether over time a country is improving or not in the distribution of that income. So that's what we're going to take a look at. The Gini coefficient uh, is very useful. It provides a quick data point for economists to see what is that level of distribution within the nation and what are some foreseeable problems or benefits from that. Uh, here we can see that when we're looking at the distribution of income, these nations in the southern portion of the African continent have very poor income distribution, that income is very unequally distributed. In South America, we see that that's also a problem, particularly in Brazil, but in also in other South American countries, we see that income is very unequally distributed, and it's also a problem in the United States. When we plotted the Lorenz curve for the US, we can see that income distribution is getting worse over time. So that should be a, um, a particular economic problem that needs to be addressed before it continues to lead to further social tensions, economic tensions, political tensions. In comparison to other developed nations like Canada, the European Union, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea, we see that there's a much better distribution of income in those nations, which can provide some spillover benefits, like a more socially um, stable uh, nation, politically stable, economically stable, because you don't have the tension rising between the disparity between rich and poor. The Lorenz curve and the Gini coefficient can also be utilized to provide a data point to illustrate the, the distribution of wealth within a country. So not only does the US have unequal income distribution, it also has unequal wealth distribution. And for the US compared to other developed nations, we can see that Canada has better wealth distribution. European nations have better wealth distribution with the exception of uh, Germany and Sweden. And Australia, New Zealand, to a degree, Japan, South Korea have better wealth distribution relative to the United States. So in a previous video, which will be linked in the video notes below, we went through a paper three practice of being provided data on the distribution of income by quintiles within the population and then plotting those points. And we're gonna use that to understand the Gini coefficient. So here we are back at using the data that we plotted from that previous video. And now we can understand what is the Gini coefficient specifically. So the Gini coefficient is measuring in this smaller graph here, the area between the line of perfect income equality, which is the blue diagonal line going across. It's the distance between that line and the Lorenz curve. So area A, the surface area of A is what we're gonna measure with the Gini coefficient. So that area divided by the total area below the Lorenz curve or areas A plus B. So that's what the Gini coefficient is. It's just simply measuring the surface area below the line of perfect income equality and the Lorenz curve divided by the total surface area below the Lorenz curve. And that gives us uh, a value between zero and one. Zero meaning that you are on the line of perfect income equality, that there is no surface area below that line because you are on that line. So the closer to zero,
the Gini coefficient is, the better the distribution of income in that particular country. The closer to one, the more unequal, all right? The closer the Gini coefficient value is to one, the more unequal. the more unequal the distribution of income. So the goal is for a nation to measure that Gini coefficient, and hopefully over time, they're getting closer to zero, meaning that distribution of income is improving over time. Unfortunately for the United States, we saw that with the data that we plot in 1970, it created this Lorenz curve that we labeled A. And from 1970 to 2021, we saw the Lorenz curve is actually shifting away from the line of perfect income equality from Lorenz curve A to Lorenz curve B. So income distribution, unfortunately, is getting worse in the United States. What would that be in terms of the Gini coefficient? Uh, we could see that, let's say if we have a little bit of space, in 1970, the value of the Gini coefficient, I'll just put GC for the Gini coefficient, would be equal to areas. I'll label this purple area A, this blue area B, and this green area C. So in 1970, it would be the area of A divided by the areas of A plus B plus C. Area A, the purple shaded area, divided by the total area of areas A plus the blue area of B and the green area of C. In 2021, the Gini coefficient would be equal to areas A plus B divided by areas A plus B plus C. So we can clearly see that 1970 surface area was less than the surface areas of 2021 of areas A plus B. So the Gini index would give us a value that's going closer to one and away from zero. So let's look at the data. Here, we're, I think I have it right here. Here is the United States. This is the Gini index for the United States. And if we look down further, the Gini index value in 1974 was 35.3. So here they're going, they're using a value up to 100 as opposed to up to one. And then from 30, from 1974, we can see that the Gini index improved, went from 35 to 34. So it's a better distribution of income. But from 1979 onward, it's just getting worse. It's getting closer to 100, 34, goes up to 37, 38, 40, and now we're at 41. So it's gone away from zero and closer to 100 in this case. So we see that the data for the Gini index is shifting towards one, or in this case, 100. So income distribution is worsening in the US over this um, almost 40, 50 year period. If we look at OECD nations, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, if we look at the uh, income inequality using the Gini coefficient going from zero to one, we can see that the that Slovakia has a very good income distribution. It's close to zero, it's 0 0.22. So that's really good distribution of income. People are more equal in the income that they receive across the, the nation. Then we see that Slovenia also has a pretty good distribution of income, 0 0.246, so it's close to zero. We get to the Czech Republic, 0 0.248, pretty good. Belgium, 2.62, uh, Norway, 0.263, Finland, 0.265, Austria, Sweden. So these nations have very good income distribution because they're relatively closer to zero then, for example, here's the United States, all the way down here, 0 0.375. So compared to all of these other developed nations within the OECD, the U.S. is not doing well in terms of the distribution of their income. Costa Rica also not doing very well at all, 0 0.48, getting closer to one. So there's some definite work to be done there. Out of curiosity, you can look on Wikipedia 
at the list of nations and their Gini coefficient values. Here it's going from zero to 100. So if a country's in 27, uh, you know, close in their 20s, maybe their, the, the, the 30s, pretty good. But if we're getting into the, the 40s and 50s and 60s, that's very, very, very unequal distribution. Here we got 46.6, Cameroon, very unequal distribution. Here we have 54, Colombia, incredibly unequal distribution, um, and so on. There's some countries that are getting into the 60s, if I can find any here. I think South Africa is one of those nations. Here we have 59 for Namibia, if I pronounce that correctly, my apologies. And we keep scrolling. Let's see if I can find South Africa. Just maybe South Africa right here, 63. Very, very poor distribution of income score for South Africa. There's a lot of work that needs to be done there. Okay, so hopefully with this video, you have a better understanding of what is the Gini coefficient? What is it measuring? What is the value of the Gini coefficient? Again, if it's closer to zero, the better the distribution of income. If it's closer to one, the worse the distribution of income or wealth, depending on what you're measuring. I will create some additional videos. We'll pr practice some paper three of plotting the Lorenz curve with data, and then perhaps even looking at some Gini coefficient data for different countries, and what does that mean just for some additional practice. If you have any questions, feel free to comment those questions below, and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.